Good afternoon, good evening, or good morning, depending on what side of the world you are on. I am Letra Davis, bringing you Lily's Chronicles for Self-Care Friday. Thank you so very much for joining me. It is my hope and prayer that you had an enjoyable Thanksgiving. I pray that you were filled with joy and love and peace. And for those that were struggling on yesterday, if you did not have a environment that was peaceful, I pray that you will find that in the future okay great to see everybody great to be with everybody hey it's relaxation time I am in a mode of relaxation but I still wanted to bring you some content tonight for self-care Friday I have been enjoying a wonderful afternoon of a lot of naps and no makeup look plain face. I'm not afraid to do that because beauty is deeper than what we put on our face, right? Cosmetics don't make us, baby. We are gorgeous no matter what. And so I've also had a wonderful um, homemade spiced lemonade that I made earlier, and that was comprised of fresh nutmeg, fresh ginger, fresh, um, let's see, cinnamon, and one other ingredient, oh, a little bit of clove and star anise. If you've not tried that mixture of spices with your fresh made lemonade and with some honey, baby, you are missing a beautiful thing. It was gorgeous. I love making it. Maybe one day I'll get to share that with some of my friends. Let me know in the comments section if you'd like to share, if you'd like for me to share that recipe with you and I'd be happy to do that. But getting back to self-care Friday, it is the topic we're going to be discussing teacher and student teacher and student the topic is you so what do I mean by that guess what in life we have the unique opportunity to be a teacher to people about how to treat us so you have the ability to teach people how you need to be treated and you also have the ability to learn from others how to be treated well. So let's go through a little thing. I was working for an employer at one point some years ago and the person had a very dictating approach to their management style and how they were operated their organization. There was a lot of screaming, there was a, yell, a lot of yelling, there was a lot of disrespect um, towards employees and I was not aware of that when I accepted the job. There were um, deceiving statements made, you know, contractually. I was told that I would be making a certain amount. And then when I actually showed up for the job, they changed my, my pay rate. And so, you know, a lot of stuff happened. Long story short, the time came where he thought that he could yell and scream at me to do some things and some, you know, what have you. And I had never experienced that in the workplace. And I wasn't about to allow that to be the norm in my, I can't do it. I just will not allow that. And so I respectfully walked into his office after he got done huffing and puffing and blowing fire towards me. And I said, sir, I am Leetra Davis. And my mother raised me to respect people. And she also raised me to be respected. And from this day forward, whatever it was that made you feel that it was okay for you to yell and scream at me, I'm letting you know that that is not acceptable. I will not tolerate it. And I will expect you never to do that again. Now, fully, I was aware that he could have dropped the bomb on me and fired me at that very moment. I was willing to take that chance because guess what? I am worth not being yelled at, not being screamed at, not being disrespected in that way. I respected him for who he was as a person, although he disrespected me. But do you not know that that was the only time he never did it again because I had set the precedent I had set the stage, I had set the boundaries that I would not tolerate it. The other people that were employed by him, they had been dealing with that for years and says, oh, that's just him and yeah, no, 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 no. We're not gonna have that. I didn't stay at that company long, needless to say, because I figured if they were gonna allow that and that was the atmosphere that I was gonna be around, even if he did not 
um, respond to me or, or treat me that way. He was treating other employees that way. It was just not an environment that was healthy. And so I made the decision to leave. And then I went to another organization that was absolutely phenomenal. So we do have the ability to stop people from treating us certain ways. But I will say to you that one of the things that you have to consider is you may be receiving certain treatment because you possibly can be teaching people by living inauthentically. If you are living inauthentically, it causes people to respond to you in a certain way and the signals that you are giving off are confusing to people so they may be finding it hard to steer their responses and their reaction towards you because they are not really positive as to why they feel what they're feeling but they sense that something is not right, not pure. So you have to be a person to live authentically and take a chance and know that there will be people that will honor you in your authentic self. You know, we're living in an age where the avatar is the thing, you know, having filters on our faces and, you know, showing pictures with things on our faces to manipulate our faces and to put certain things. And if you noticed, I don't have on any makeup today because I am in relaxing mode. I am not going to put makeup on every day of my life because guess what? Gorgeousness comes from within. It's not something that I put on our face, my face or your face, right? But we live in an age where we want to see things in a fantasy mode, an imaginary type of way. But what happens is, is we are walking through our lives with other people and we are living lives that um, are not authentic and so they're responding to us in that way and then when we are not feeling really loved or we're not feeling really understood or we're not feeling truly heard or truly what have you it may be because we're not living authentically so I would encourage us to live lives authentically and purely and let the people respond the way we need them to respond give them the boundaries let them know by either action deed or verbal what is acceptable to you and what is not acceptable to you that goes for outside world and that goes on in the home as well you can share with your spouse your partner your family members your children your mama your daddy hey mom dad you know, I understand that this is how you are, but this is how this makes me feel when you say this, or this is how I feel when you do this. They may not change because they've lived all their lives doing certain things a certain way, but at least you've put them on notice that it's not okay. So simultaneously, you are teaching people how to treat you as well as being a student. You're showing them that I am a teacher of you to show you how to treat me, but I'm also learning from you how I want to be treated. And so you take cues from different relationships all of our lives, different people we encounter all of our lives, and we're getting information. We're processing information to say, you know what, I need to be treated this way. And also, if you know that you are in a cycle of not being treated well, you need to unlearn some lessons. You need to unlearn some chapters in some books that have been given to you, some unhealthy curriculum, and you need to find healthy ways of being treated. And you can learn that, but you do have to... Um, get all of that gook out of your heart and out of your space of being and the essence of who you are. So just know in your self-care regimen and on your self-care journey, you are both the teacher to help people know how to teach you and you also are the student about learning how to be treated well. So that way your self-care journey can be really, really awesome. Well, that's all I have for you tonight. I hope it was helpful. Would you do something for me? Would you like 
If you have been encouraged by this, if this has been insightful to you, would you comment if you can uh, resonate, if there's something that was said that was helpful to you, and would you share? And lastly, please, please, please subscribe. I need 1,000 subscribers before the end of 2020, and I believe we can do it. It will help me bring more content with best production prop, uh, quality to you guys. That would be so sweet if you would join me in reaching that goal. Also, you can be a patron of Letra Davis, Lily's Chronicles. I'll have the link in the description area where you can support me for $5 every month. And that would really help me continue my journey in bringing better and consistent content. Love, like, Litra, like, love, Litra, Litra, love, like, mix them up. Doesn't matter to me as long as you know I love you. All right, y'all. Have a wonderful rest of your night. Blessings. Join me tomorrow morning for Scholarship Saturday, 12 noon EST time. We're going to be talking about the holidays too. Mm-hmm. Yes, indeed. All right, bye.